When the stars were still young at their watchposts in the heavens, when the moon still dripped with the blood of the earth that bore it, when the line of Magnon failed, and the people of the north prayed for peace, then four heroes set out into the Grimwild in search of a bountiful tree that would bring them solace and healing. Welcome, everybody. My name, I'm Tormented by Gnomes. I'm the host of Casters and Castles. Joining me today, we've got Captain Fluke, Driftwood Ash, Jake, and Seltzer. And we're all really, really happy to be here with you today and with Altiora Gaming to raise money for a really important cause. Our hope is that the story that we tell at our table, the adventure that we share, will have ramifications that reach out beyond our silly world of Dungeons and Dragons to make an actual difference in the lives of people who really, really need it at this time. Uh, we're all very, very grateful to LTR Gaming for hosting this event. And during this show, what are we at right now? We're at like 1009 on the Tiltify, I believe. Woo! So as we climb those numbers, as we go up those numbers, you will be able to activate Acts of God during our game that will wreak havoc on our story, make my life more difficult, and raise money for a good cause. Uh, I'll have more details on how you can do that in a moment, but first off, I want to introduce our fantastic crew today. Joining us first, we have Captain Fluke. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's my first time playing with a lot of you. Um, I am an esports caster, most notable for Rainbow Six Siege. Um, and I post a lot of rubbish on Twitter, so you may also know me from that. Um, I play a lot of tabletop games, um, and this is actually one of the first times I've done like a, a sort of one-shot with a lot of people I've never played with before, so I'm very excited. Glad to have you with us. Um, second off, welcome back. Super happy to have you here. Driftwood Ash. Hello. I'm Ashley, a.k.a. Driftwood Ash. I am a producer. So, formerly of Overwatch League, generally of nerd content, lover of role-playing games. Um, super stoked to be back and be here. Uh, I've been in quest for the Book of Dawn as Lysha and Faden, and I'm super happy to have created a, a little one-shot character here to also play with a bunch of people I've never played with before. Yay! For a good cause. Yeah, that, that's pretty <laughs> awesome, too. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, third, welcome back. Coming off of his, not his debut, but his second ever on-stream tabletop RPG, we've got Jake. Jake, welcome back to Casters and Castles. Hi, I'm Jake, aka Jake. Um, I've been a professional player in the Overwatch League, caster in the Overwatch League, and this season I am coaching an Overwatch League team. Um, so subtle thematic elements there, but now I'm here to play tabletop RPG for a good cause, and I'm super excited to play with all y'all. And last but not least, uh, somebody who I've had the privilege of playing with many, many times. You may know her from Red Sky City, as well as, you know, her actual really super awesome, special, famous career. We've got Seltzer with us. Thanks for having me, Joseph. I, I hop on any t uh, opportunity to be at your table. It's always a great time, and I'm really excited to play with everyone else here. I've only played with Emmy before, and that was a blast, and I'm really excited to play with the rest of you and to hopefully raise money for a good cause. I've already got the donation page loaded up. I understand uh, putting money in makes acts of God happen. So uh, at a key moment, someone with the username of Seltzer, that's definitely not me, is probably going to make a little infusion there. But the rest of you... Uh, <laughs> Use this opportunity well. <laughs> it's all for a great cause, too. Awesome. All right. I'm just going to throw some money at the thing real quick so I can... If, so I can... All right. So, our adventure today takes place in the Four Kingdoms of Anakra, a fantasy world not too unlike any Dungeons & Dragons world that you've seen. Knights ride across the open plains... Uh, rescuing beautiful dragons from terrifying princesses, the lot of the works, so everything that you're familiar with. And recently in this world, the, the seaside castle of Clifton has been melted to slag by the terrible dragon Ashardalon. In the wake of this disaster, four heroes enter the Grimwild, a dense, dark forest just on the borders of civilized land. No paths lead all the way through it, and most folk would always travel around its perimeter rather than dare its central darkness. And yet we find today four heroes tracking that exact path. 
Why don't we go ahead and meet them now? Uh, as we, as the camera soars through the twisted, gnarled branches, their sticks and twigs reaching out as if to pluck your very heart from its chest, we find them traveling warily through the wood. Um, Emmy, why don't you tell us who your character is, what they look like, and what they're carrying, how they're handling this adventure so far. Um, they're handling it okay. Um, I am playing Laylam, who is a a knight from Wayanel Keep, which is a very sort of small. Uh, it, it it's not it's quite isolated, just a little basic kingdom. You know, you got a little royal family there, and and she serves as a knight. She's trained um, as a royal knight um, with not the most ostentatious armor. She's sort of a little bit shiny. She tries to keep it as clean as possible. She's been raised that way. She stands about five foot ten. But her appearance is one that is a little bit off-putting in that she sort of resembles a corpse. Um, she's very pallid, pale skin and, and sunken sort of cheekbones. And the whites of her eyes are very obvious. And it's a bit of a graying to her skin, slightly blackened claw finger ends and a general coldness about her with wispy black long hair um, that she tries to ignore at the best, but it does frighten uh, children and others generally. There are no children to be found here in the depths of the grim world. Um, what does your character have out in, in your hands and how are you approaching this adventure? Are you filled with trepidation? Do you look confident, unconcerned? Uh, she's, it, she's a little bit nervous. It's her first time leaving the keep. It's her first time sort of exploring the world, but she has a bit of excitement about it. She's got a sword and a shield, um, both bound to her, um, by, you know, tricks that she's been taught. Don't think about it too much. Um, and she has this sort of pride in where she's from, regardless of how they sort of viewed her or saw her. Um, and she tries to... For now, as a fresh recruit doing this final sort of part of her training and seeing the world, play it a bit by the book. But that is a sort of lesson that I think she's being taught by her compatriots that this world doesn't really play by a book. Most of the people in this world want to burn that book. Depending on the title of the book, especially. All right. <laughs> Ash, tell us about your character. What do we see as we go from one face to the next? Uh, well, camera suddenly has to pan very far down. Uh, I am small, uh, very small. Um, I will be playing Pepper, a fairy of the Seelie court, um, and fairy in the most classical sense of the word, uh, about maybe two feet tall, uh, wings, um, probably like a kind of purplish wing that like fades out to a green on the ends. Uh, you know, Sealy Court with the pretty, pretty fairies, but uh, also still real creepy. Um, might notice a dark hint to her eyes sometimes. Uh, blonde hair uh, and has um, come here at the behest of Lady Niv uh, to spy on the Unseelie Court and is currently following some leads that she are, is very sure are going to pan out. Revenge! Um, Revenge! Revenge! Carries two little daggers, uh, set out shortly after a fateful wedding, and um, yeah, ran into uh, Lalem and has been following her ever since for reasons unknown. Excellent. Occasionally grilling her for information what kind of information where are your troops hiding <laughs> I, I think they're all still just at the keep i'm not really sure what to tell you likely story i could take it but uh, okay <laughs> right Camera does that thing where we have Pepper's face really suspicious. It slowly slides away over to Jake's character, then goes right back to Pepper, who still looks suspicious, before finally making its way over to Jake. Jake, tell us about your character, who has uh, made an appearance on Casters and Castles at least once before, I believe. Yeah, so I'm returning, playing as uh, Arthic, 
who doesn't mind the camera, you know, being off of him. He's he's uh, a former criminal, a rogue. You know, keeps his daggers close at hand, especially, uh, you know, in in a in a wood such as such as this in the Grim World, knowing that you know the dangers could always be around the next corner, unseen in the shadows. So, uh, he's an er Erganasi rogue, um, gr dark gray skin and white hair. Um, keeps to himself, you know, willing to to be part of the team to to get things done, but. In the end, his loyalties lie with himself. All right. And last but not least, Seltzer, describe the scene as we meet the last member of our party. Uh, yes, as uh, Jake's character is sort of hanging towards the edge and the two ladies are, you know, explaining how they know each other and familiarizing themselves with the group, the ground rumbles and approaching from the trees, uh, eating something that looks delicious but maybe doesn't appear to all senses as such, uh, is the great Devil who is wearing full paladin armor, huge pauldrons, a massive helm that shows that he has been in many battles and has taken many blows to the head, but still remarkably remains upright. Uh, he is a human paladin, a former soldier, and currently on a quest for ingredients. Uh, he has taken up a cooking. Um, he's not great at it, but he's good at it. Well, you know, good ingredients are really important no matter what your skill level is. So I might recommend laying off the saffron and really pricey things at your skill level, but I'm not one to judge. The great job works mostly with butter, fats, and whey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, easy pro tip to level up your cooking skills. Whenever it says add this much butter, just double that. This much garlic, quadruple that. The great job ever recognizes your skill as well. <laughs> as they say in the Grimwild game, recognize game. Now, we take our story from the halls of the Golden Bow where it began to the dark woods of the Grimwild, where our heroes have been traveling for over a day, making their way out from the civilized lands of Galadron and Versingit far from the terrible shadow of the wings of Ashardalon, the dragon of the world before, here to a place where it seems like the struggles of mortal kingdoms have never once troubled this ancient woodland. You can scarcely see the clouded sky through the gnarled branches and the dark overgrown leaves. Vines and mistletoe grow up the gnarled ancient boughs of these trees that have borne witness to the rise and fall of kings. It feels as though as you pass underneath their watchful gaze, they pay you no more mind than you would pay a passing squirrel or a sparrow. It's difficult for you to see any sort of wildlife here, though you always feel like you're being watched by eyes glistening in the dark all around you. Of the four of you, who of you are actually any good at navigation, survival, making your way in the woods. Does anyone here happen to have that skill set? I'm proficient in nature. That might help. Roll a nature check for me. That's a 15. A 15? Okay. All right. You are working your way towards the very, very heart of the forest, the deepest place, for that is where it is said that in a fey grove grows the tree of bounty, a tree that is blessed with the morning dew that descends from the celestial lights above, illuminated, its roots go all the way into the elemental wellsprings of the underworld, drawing up the rich, rich magic of the four kingdoms. And every month it bears four fruits and only four fruits of unpredictable but mystical quality. Each of you is on this quest to retrieve one of these fruits for your own devices. I know that one of you is looking to make some sort of a cobbler, I imagine. But the rest of you, whether or not you've shared your motives with the party, there's some different possibilities for it. So, you've made your 15 nature check. Is the rest of the party willing to let Pepper guide the way? I absolutely know how to get there. Double Rubble respects the confidence. Watch out for that tree stump! I mean, I have no reason to doubt you, but it all looks the same, right? Don't it? Well, that's obviously because you don't know much about the forest. It's this way. I, 
trust you. Uh, I suppose magical tree's gonna stand out, right? I don't know if I trust you. But don't mind that leading. natural twenty I rolled. It was nothing. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> Just flexing. Exactly. But I'm not leading the the way. So that's right. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like you in spite of myself, but you should probably follow me. I f find it strangely hard to say no. Everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, uh, and apropos of absolutely nothing, what are the passive perception scores of the party? Oh. Should we type them in? Uh, just, just, yeah, type them in. That way I can scroll it and not need to, to ping you too often. <laughs> not good. All right. We have ooh, 12, 10, 11. Um, I'm also a 10. All right. Great. Could. Excellent. Then that natural 20 I rolled was absolutely, it didn't, it never mattered in the first place. As you proceed through the forest, you can see strange witch light glowing along the undergrowth where the fungus, the toadstools, and the creeping lichens have their own phosphorescence. The darker it gets, the deeper you go, the less sunlight makes its way down to the forest floor, the more unearthly luminescence rises up from the boughs. And as you proceed, you can start to see bones of other travelers strewn amongst the roots of the forest. Behold, here they are. Eerie ectoplasmic mists roll along the ground. But if all if all that Pepper knows is true, then the way forward lies in this direction. As you draw closer and closer, before any of you notice, you hear a terrible voice shout out, HALT! Who goes there? Dabra who stops in his tracks. All right. The wood creaks as branches are shoved out of the way, and the heavy metal footsteps of a towering figure force their way through the brush. And you find yourselves confronted by a knight clad in misshapen, mismatched armor, hobbling towards you disjointedly, wielding an awful, huge, crude, scarcely sharpened sword, pitted with rust and stained with blood, a crude helmet upon his head, easily a foot taller than any of you in the party. Is there an apparent rank to this soldier? Does any of this like armor feature mm. like any sort of evolution? Similar question. Okay, all right, so this, I'm going to call for a history check, unless any of you have the noble background. Uh, I have the knight background. The knight, the knight is a variation like of noble, that counts, that totally courtier? counts. Courtier? Oh, cool. Courtier would also count. No, this looks like a hedge knight at most. Like, that's not even, those. Th that armor isn't even all the same set of armor. It's several different pieces of armor that have all been cobbled together. Uh, and inexpertly, you would say. Not with any great deal of, of craft or skill whatsoever. I don't think he's from an actual regiment. N not that it matters much. Can I spot any weaknesses in the armor? Yeah, roll a perception check, please, Jake, to take a look. A six! So startled are you by the emergence of this creature, and it's difficult to see from the unearthly glow rising from the mushrooms and the weird fog swirling around him. Uh, this, is, this does not look like any creature from mortal tales. It looks like something out of myth, and you're unable to discern any weaknesses in its armor whatsoever. Does this unearthly glow or fog like mean mm -hmm. anything to me? Would I recognize this in any way? You're drawing close to a, f to a crossing point to the other world. These are all... Now, some of these mushrooms might have magical properties. You got a 15 on your nature check, so you can identify some of them that could have mystical abilities. Um, you're not totally sure which ones are which, but if you eat them, something will definitely happen. That, that said, <laughs> they don't seem... trip. <laughs> I uh, did not say that's what's going to happen. 
I also didn't say it isn't. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't mean that kind <laughs> of magic. I mean like arcane properties, you know, mystical. We have a chef. You do have we a do. chef. We do. I might suggest gathering some of those mushrooms, but maybe we should first focus on, I think we're going home. Or a home. Maybe not my home, but something that approaches my home. You are going nowhere. You have trespassed upon the domain of the Knight of Bones. Oh, that sounds very important, but I can assure you we're going somewhere. Yes, you are going to pay tribute. That's where you're going. That while, right? while the other party members are talking with the knight, I'd like to uh, step around back behind the party and try to slip off into the shadows. Great. Roll a or... stealth check for me, please, Arthek. 16. Much, much better. Where do you want to sneak off to? Um, just off. So this is this is our just orientation. I'd, I'd like to, to um, slip off behind, behind a tree with some distance. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead and move yourself off the beaten path. The rogue vanishes into the forest. Uh, Pepper is speaking with the Knight of Bones. What are the great Dabarabu? And can you pronounce your character's name for me again? Lalem. Lalem. What are the great Dabarabu and Lalem doing in the face of this foe? Um, Lalem would sort of, she would stand sort of alongside Pepper and try and be a little bit regal and be like, we are here serving a good cause. We don't mean any harm on your keep and aren't trying to cause any trouble. We're here to help. And, of course, uh, the great Dabarabu is standing just to the side of the ladies, prepared to leap into action to their defense and mostly to test his strength against the Knight of Bones. I care not for your cause, for even now, you have done me a great offense by entering my lands without announcing yourselves. I demand satisfaction. We could announce ourselves now. Nope, too late. It's satisfaction time. Single combat. Oh, thank God. The great job ever thought it would be something gross. I will fight the knife <laughs> bones. Flexes is big. I, yeah, what is he got? He's got a sword. All right. I'm sorry. Was your land clearly marked? I didn't see a sign. You see all these bones? The Knight of Bones gestures at the (laughs) dead, decomposed corpses laying at his feet. These are bones. I'm the Knight of Bones. This is my sign. They could be anybody's bones, really. Well, they're not. They're my bones from my kills that I killed, okay? That seems very intimidating. Yes, that's the entire point. Can we talk about this though? Maybe we could help you come up with a better sort of design scheme if you didn't fight us. No? Roll a persuasion check, please, (laughs) Peppa. A flat eight. A 10. With my plus seven, I got a 10. (laughs) He does not care for your interior design. All right. My aesthetic is very clearly rustic gothic and does not require an outside consultation at this time. Fair enough, really. All right, Dabarabu, you're up! (laughs) You could also turn over all your valuables, personal belongings, any snacks that you're carrying instead if you are too cowardly to face me and to satisfy my honor. I think he's already charging at you. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he is, isn't he? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> as soon as i got permission from pepper uh, i began my attack all right so if that's how it's going to be this is the part where we roll initiative <laughs> now there is a little trick to roll 20 try to make sure that you've clicked on your token before you roll for initiative if you didn't that's fine it's not the end of the world i'll do it manually i didn't roll great anyway so. lay with a six oh. Pepper with it's a like 10. Six. Sorry, I oh, you were, how, how do I do that? We'll take, so 13 came first. Click on your token and then on your character sheet, I think somewhere near the middle, top, there should be a button that says initiative. Right next to the armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like y'all, a second row of stats. Y'all got uh, I see, I see. Yeah, I got bad initiatives. Mm-hmm. All right. Badly. Are we missing anybody? We are missing the great Dabarabu. Uh, hold on, I'm just typing in. It's a roll 20. Mm-hmm. They said single combat. How honest are we? No, no. That's not. 
<laughs> rolling 20. It. Well, you rolled 20 take, and take you take got it. 20. Congratulations. It's, <laughs> it's like, here, I'm just going to, you know, roll 100. I got 100. <laughs> did I do good? A 16. You did good. The DM you does win. It. Exactly. Rolling. Exactly. All right. So we're going to do two things right now. First off, I am going to roll and I'm doing some secret sneaky rolls so that you can't tell exactly what's going on with the Knight of Bones. <laughs> Anyways, it is up to you. So, two things happen. First off, the great Dabarabu charges into battle. Second off. Behold, an act of God. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh boy. Emerald Wisdom, go. gain insight into the universe. All right. I think it'd be funniest, honestly, if this mystical insight befell the great Dabarabu. <laughs> okay, so... Almighty and powerful Dabarabu, pick one of your three ability scores, your mental ability scores, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. The great Dabarabu has a negative in wisdom, and we can already <laughs> open that area. All right. Great Dabarabu, for the rest of this scene, you have advantage on all wisdom checks and saving throws. Anything that has to do with wisdom, as you charge forward, the mists fill your lungs, your mind's clear. It's kind of got that like menthol, eucalyptus-y, cough drop -y sort of scent to it. And you just you just feel this sense of, of clarity, of centeredness, of understanding. Now pick either intelligence or wisdom or charisma. The great Dabarabu immediately thinks of his stellar charisma, which sits at zero. Great. Well, you have disadvantage on all of those for the rest of the scene. Well, that's probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> so just to bring you up to speed, chat, uh, in the last few minutes, we've raised somewhere in the area of $400. Woo! Oh. Wow. Woo also, holy crap, that's a lot of acts of God. <laughs> <laughs> that's really worrying for my <laughs> side. <laughs> It's amazing, but it's terrifying. Hey, hey you, just, you, you just got like a, a good thing just happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyways, I didn't want to set like a flat threshold because by this threshold, we're already up to eight acts of God. And I kind of want to space <laughs> these out as we go. Um, but if we get up to $500, if we break $1,500 total raised this session, um, I'll throw in an extra rank 50 act of God. How about that? One of the really game ruining, distracting, derailing, chaos sowing ones. Um, I'll try to get an update on where we stand shortly. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. That's what's up. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing this. It's for it's for people in need, and for that we can have some complete and total chaos. Throw All right. out your notes, Joe. Sorry, what? I said throw out your notes. Yeah. You think I took notes for this? I knew what was going to happen. I do have notes. All right. Great and powerful Dabarabu, it is your turn. What would you like to do? As the wisdom surges, a gift from the gods through my tiny and very spacious cranium, I gain a new appreciation for uh, the Knight of Bones' body language. And note, perhaps, the hunch and lean to the left indicates a an old wound and insecurity and perhaps a not strong attachment to parental figures. And I would like <laughs> to use this knowledge uh, to bring my sword down on uh, his neck. Okay. Uh, I would like you to roll an insight check, please, with advantage. I will do that. Uh, okay. And this is where the integration into roll 20 is. Let's see. Uh, so if, it should be. If the beyond 20 is working, you should be able to click... Right next to it, it should roll right into this. Yeah, if you just click on your modifier, it should automatically roll in roll 20. I like the idea that the music just started because Did that come through? Rachel's messed up the Beyond 20. <laughs> <laughs> the music was stuck in there. It has not gone through yet. All right, well, I got a 19 plus minus one, which put me at an 18. And do I roll wow. it again for uh... advantage? Yes, please. Go ahead and roll again. Well, that's a nine, so I would like to keep the first okay. one. Okay. As you analyze the Knight of Bones combat stance, it's weird. It's extremely strange. In particular, there seems to be a lot of instability somewhere around the Knight's waist. Uh, 
like the top half and the bottom half aren't completely moving to get in normal synchronization. Normally you'd have a warrior have a certain stance as they flex and sway, they sort of like their whole body would move. But right now it seems like the bottom moves and then the top moves sort of back and forth. Uh, it, it, it's not something that you perhaps would have noticed normally, but given this deep level of perception that you've obtained, something is definitely odd about this knight's fighting stance, uh, which will give you advantage on this next attack roll as you identify this potential weakness, assuming you can close the distance. Oh, can the great Dapper Rebel close the distance? Uh, he has a movement speed of 30 feet, and it does not look good. So that's six squares? Mm-hmm. You should be able to move. Yep, perfect. All right. Now, do you you could dash as an action, obviously, or you could use a oh, ranged no. weapon if you want to. Ignore that. Ooh, I would like to dash because I am charging. The Great Dove Rebel has his sword out, but thanks to the gift of wisdom, realizes the unalignment in his stance. I would like to switch this to an unarmed strike aimed at the knees of the uh, bones, dude. All right, power slide. Go ahead and roll an unarmed attack and move into range. Okay, that's... Nope, these are not coming through. All right, here we go. That's all right, what? I trust. Oh, oh, it went through. Wow, okay, excellently done. Move yourself directly into combat position. Boom. And then I'm gonna roll an opposed check. Uh, I'd like you to roll an athletics check for me, please. Oh, that's uh, happily. I got a four. You got 17. a 17. All right. The great, all my went. the great Dabarabu slides into the Knight of Bones, directly into the kneecap. The Knight of Bones topples forward, plummeting towards you, falling prone, and the top half separates from the bottom half. Hmm. He just caught that man in half. Does it land on me? Yes. Is there gore? No. And the top half is still moving. Is the bottom half? Yes. Uh, whose turn <laughs> is next? It is Arthek's turn next. Arthek, before you continue your turn, roll a perception mm. check for me, please. Certainly. A Strong. 16. As you peer through the forest, you see a pair of ears poking out of the bottom half of the Knight of Bones armor. What kind of ears? Uh, pointed ears and a mop of messy hair. All right, I'd like to, I'd like to, um, from my hiding spot, mm -hmm. you know, now I guess I can leave the hiding spot at this point with the knight somewhat incapacitated. <laughs> and well, see, given that I've seen this mop of unruly hair, I'd like to to grab whatever creature has been exposed by the great Dabarabu's mm -hmm. attack and pick them up by their hair and, and hold them out for the for the party to see. All right, as a if rogue, you have the, the move. Distance. As a rogue, because you have the ability to dash as a bonus action, you can definitely reach all the way there. So go ahead and move right. yourself up to the Knight of Bones and uh, roll an opposed athletics check to remove the creature from inside. So roll athletics. I will also roll. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's not good at all. He's wiry. I got a 17. All right. <laughs> the creature inside bites your hand. Inflicting no damage, but as you reach, like, grab the hair, it's like, ah, 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 ow, ow, ow. You've moved, you've used your bonus action, you've used your action. Talking is a free action, but aside from that, your turn is over. Anything mm -hmm. else from Arthek? Just let out a blood-curdling wail and pull my <laughs> hand away from this set of armor. All right. Pepper, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Oh, my God, he's in half! Uh... <laughs> I am going to uh, rush, not rush, but move forward. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll, I'll you know, I'll chill like here. Uh, 
and be like, I'm holy being, be fear the silly court and cast uh, the word the radiance cantrip. Mm -hmm. uh, so he needs to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, against a DC of 15. All right. I got a 10. I failed. What happens? Uh, he do It's not a lot. Uh, he'll take 2d6 uh, radiant damage. All right. Roll it. Feel free to do it directly in roll 20 if you'd like. I don't know how to do that. Why would I know how to do that? <laughs> it's been too long. Slash R space 2d6. It's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I you definitely knew that. Me. I was just Four. saying you did. Uh, so yeah, four damage. Ah, it burns! It burns! Make it stop! That's right, unholy demon. Actually, if you were an unholy demon, that'd probably be a lot more fun, but you're just annoying. Ow! And a goblin crawls out of the lower half of the armor, clutching at its smoldering hair. <sighs> Unseely fiend! Tell me where your armies are. Uh, yeah, uh, where, where the armies are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yep, yeah, okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Get him, boys! <laughs> and that's my turn. Yep, Laylam, it's your turn. What do you do? <laughs> I look at everything that's going on, like the wrestling with the torso and <laughs> nursing the bit finger and that. It's like, this really isn't how I thought my first knight versus knight fight would go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am going to... I guess I'll, I'll help the are you like struggling under the torso uh yeah is this like a grapple situation no it's just on top of you oh. the, the the goblin in the top half isn't attempting to the problem is that the goblin in the top half can't really move it independently and has to remove himself so it's just the top half is on top of you that's all there is okay um i want to go up to the top half and can i Pick it up from like the torso, so it's like upside down. Like I've got him in like a bucket, like, upside down. <laughs> just, like, yes. him up. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, would that be like a strength or <laughs> roll an athletics check for me? Athletics. Twenty one. Absolutely hoisted. <laughs> You see, and it's, it's like the legs are stick are flailing because he was in that the other direction, right? So you've just got these two goblin feet flailing and kicking back and forth. Let me out. <laughs> no, not until you stop all of this. Really, it's too much. Are these even your bones? <laughs> Capture him! Capture him! Fight his keepers! That doesn't work with bones! bones. <laughs> Does not want a parasite of that veracity. <laughs> All right, so you've got you've got the goblin in an armor bucket, and you're shaking it back and forth, demanding that the goblin surrender and stop all this. Uh, this goblin is not really able to do much without trying to struggle out of the armor bucket. Was there anything else that Laylam wanted to do? No, I think the other one's in a much more danger from Pepper and mm -hmm. maybe Arthek. So I'll I'll wait to see what the Great Dobarabu does next. I think. All right, well, it's not the great Dabarabu's turn. It's all the goblins yeah. who rolled a natural 20 on their stealth check's turn. All the goblins. Ah. Oh. The I goblins. This is where your army is. We found the army. <laughs> yes, congratulations, you found the army. Attack! The goblins leap from the trees, throwing stink bombs and nets. Two of them hurl stink bombs just clay pots filled with things I would prefer not to describe on stream, but the stench of them, the odiferous reek, all the worst things of garbage, and you know that funky smell that salad gets when it's just been left too long, it's got that very particular ugh, combined with old orange juice that's turned? Yeah, it smells like that. Two of them hurl these stink bombs that explode all over the party and their fellow goblins. I need, oh, and Laylam, you would be up here wrangling this goblin. Um, so oh, yeah, I, sorry. no, all good, all good. I need all four of you to roll Constitution saving throws, please. Hmm. Oh no, I'm sorry, Jesus. that's just the standard roll. There we go. Dirty twenty. Okay, sweet. Um, am I missing any? Me. Yeah, twenty. Twenty-one. I like twenty-one. 
Okay, the good news is everybody resisted the stench except for Arthak who got hit directly in the face. <laughs> the clay pot <laughs> splatters, something indescribable slimes all over his face. The stench fills your nostrils and Arthak, while you take no damage, you are affected by the poisoned condition, meaning you have disadvantage on basically everything except saving throws and your stomach is not in a happy place right now. The other goblin who isn't in this whole conundrum is going to run over and seeing that Arthek is uh, thusly affected, hurls a net in an attempt to land it directly on you. Now, he doesn't get advantage on this roll, but he is going to go ahead and fling a net at you. What's your armor class, Arthek? Doesn't um, matter. I missed. No. Okay. All right. Two things happen. Actually, I have two more goblins that need to go. But before they can go, folks, we just crossed one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars total raised. So, wow. thank you so much for your generosity. We have done so much for the people of Ukraine just in the last like 30, 40 minutes or so. And I think that the only way to properly reward everybody is a little bit of chaos. So let's just go ahead and. Did I just hear three? Uh, you shouldn't have. Ooh, your greatest failure. If you really cared, you would have succeeded. Now, the person I can think of who just recently failed a check would be Arthek. And after all the adventures that you've been on, the dangers you've overcome, you have felt the searing heat of a Chardelon's breath itself. And now to fall to the, like, this stinking pot in your face, it does not feel particularly good. Um, could you roll a charisma saving throw with disadvantage for me? I will try. Okay, we're taking the eight. Um, oh, you, actually, no, you wouldn't have had disadvantage because poison doesn't inflict disadvantage on saves, just on everything else. Okay, uh, so there are no mechanical effects, Arthic, but... In terms of roleplay, you're having a bit of a crisis at the moment. Just in a, a bit of a crisis of of confidence. This is yeah. Arthic embarrassing. Is, is normally emotionless, normally you know focused on his, his roguelike duties, but to be put in this position and and to be attacked by a pack of filthy, stinking goblins, the rage seethes below the surface as he you know thinks thinks about the daggers concealed on his per on his person Ooh, we we all deal with hurt ego in different ways and some of us wake up and choose violence all right before we get on to our next acts of god uh we are at one thousand and nine dollars when we started we're somewhere over one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars now so yeah we owe you some more chaos first off the goblin who just got zapped by pepper is going to use his action his bonus action to disengage, scurrying away and avoiding all attacks of opportunity as he flees up into the trees. And then he's going to throw a net at the great Dabarabu. He hurls it from above. Uh, that's at plus four. What's your armor class, great Dabarabu? The great Dabarabu has an armor class of 12. Well, I got an 11. So the net lands directly on top of you, but you're able to shuffle it off and it falls to the ground at your feet moments afterwards. The goblin's uh, regional supervisor reveals himself as well. And swearing and cursing at all the rest of his goblins who are just not delivering right now. Fezziwig Hardfingers the third, you are an incompetent, terrible excuse for a goblin. Grumgog is going to have our heads for this. We're below quota. Get them! And shrieking and stamping his feet on the ground, the goblin is going to... Hmm. He's going to hurl a glob of something sticky directly at the Great Dabarabu, a glue pot. Which does splat all over the Great Dabarabu, who is now restrained by the goo. And also not feeling particularly dignified. That's gross. <laughs> all right. So he hurls that and just screams at the rest of the goblins to, to hurry up and capture these, uh, these interlopers. 
and get their shinies. It is now the great Dabarabu's turn. Great and powerful Dabarabu, uh, you're restrained, but you could use your action to try to escape. That being said, oh, I didn't roll for the goblin in the bucket. The, the goblin in the bucket. Bucket goblin. bucket goblin is going to try to escape. Please roll an opposed athletics check. Cool. Laylam. Oh. It's it's a like the whole thing is rocking back and forth as he's trying to get some footing and push himself up and out so his legs keep popping up and down inside of the inside of the suit Would of you armor. Stop it for a moment, please. <laughs> Now it is the Great Dabarabu's turn. What would you like to do? The Great Dabarabu, upon seeing the Jarati hit dear Artek, uh, was overcome by the display of emotion that Artek then showed, and then was hit by his own sticky glob and experienced empathy with that emotion. And so Dabarabu right now would like to put out both of his arms and face the goblins and say, hey! 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 Give us a minute here! And then turn to Arthur and say, Friend! Are you okay? Hey! Hey! Once, one sec! Arthur! Now Arthur doesn't respond with any, any verbal cues, almost not hearing the great Dabarabu as he first wipes the smelly, awful concoction off of his face, flicks his hand to, to get it off of him. And just has no response, doesn't even look at the great Dabarabu, uh, completely unmoved by that display of, of emotion. For Arthur, it's beyond words at this point. The great Dabarabu would like to call a time out so we can address the emotional needs of the party. Then perhaps we can resume the fisticuffs. All right. Roll a persuasion or intimidation check, but unfortunately, due to the counterbalance of Emerald Wisdom, you got to do this at disadvantage. That's fine. We're going to do the intimidation check. All right. And this is less intimidating as in I'm going to crush you and more of just like, hey, you need to respect boundaries right now. Yeah. This is wow. A pair of eights. <laughs> it's not good, is it? I feel like everything that you say is the great Dabarabu is said, even the stuff like Dabarabu knows they have to take this into consideration. <laughs> Like, is it just like we're out loud? Like, <laughs> the great Dabarabu does not remove himself from address at the beginning of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can take time out to consider the emotional ramification of these nuts. Get them! Ah! Ah! <laughs> you got it, boss. Uh. All right, Arthek, it's your turn. Now you are still poisoned, which means anything you do will have disadvantage, but it doesn't put any other restrictions on your actions at this time. So Arthek, at this point, he's he's wiped the worst of it from his face, but you know what the goblins put in that pot can't be easily purged. Not from not from the nose, not from memory, uh, and certainly not from you know his feelings, which right now are boiling over in a typically you know calm collected rogue right now he's really losing control and so in in a fit of spite and rage rather than attacking the goblin leader or slipping off into the mist as probably would be his his typical strategy instead he turns to the goblin trapped by Laylam, and before anyone can react makes an attack on that goblin with his daggers Laylam, you can use your reaction if you want um or you can allow the goblin to be turned into a bowl of goblin soup. Now, if you use your reaction, that's not a guarantee that Arthic will not succeed in his intentions. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will use my reaction to sort of try and stop the stabbing goblin in a barrel. All right. And silly sympathizer. <laughs> Pepper will remember this. It just feels a little mean. All right, Arthic, roll your attack with disadvantage because of the poison. So I would roll dexterity in this case? No, you or should have a or? modifier next to your weapon that will tell you exactly ah, what I to see. roll. Do I have to roll anything? Not yet. We're going to see if, if this misses, okay. no worries. If it succeeds, we'll talk. And if anybody has D&D Beyond open wants to... Oh, there we go. Uh, all right, so that was the damage roll. The attack roll... Uh, would 
Uh, if you just roll a flat 1d20, I can probably calculate okay. it. Just roll 1d20 twice, I, I can eyeball it. It's usually like if you roll two, I'm not even going to do the math. I feel like there's other ones that need to be dealt with first. All right, so the five. So you go to stab and the whole suit of armor goes up. And the knife, instead of, of, instead of stabbing in on the top of the torso, it stabs into the faceplate. And inside the armor, the goblin is just inches away from getting shanked. <laughs> and you oh, continue. for the ones that threw their mess at you first. And at the end of your turn, Arthek, roll a new constitution. Well, now, first off, you have your bonus action. You can dash if you want. You can withdraw if you want. You can still move around if you feel like it. Do you want to do anything along those lines? Mm. Mm. So now after after failing my strike, maybe my Arthic's rage turns to shame as he realizes <sighs> Leo is right. He needs to he needs to win this battle to, to mm -hmm. avenge himself, not merely lash out in anger. He's he's ashamed of that initial emotional response. You know, it's it's brought up dark memories of the past to be covered in, in goblin shit. So I'm gonna try to um, use a bonus action to dash off into the forest and see if I can disengage. All right, absolutely. Where do you wanna end up? Um, I'm gonna be dashing away from the main pack of goblins, so down to the south. All right, you can go up to 30 feet in any direction. And because this goblin can't really fight back at the moment, you can use your bonus action to stealth instead. So you can roll stealth check, which you still have to do at disadvantage because of the poison. Okay, so I'll use stealth to make that movement. Yeah, roll or... stealth. Uh, roll stealth with disadvantage. You're going to make the movement no matter what happens. Wow, a 17 and a 27. Great. So go ahead and move yourself up to 30 feet down into the forest, and you are stealthed. And finally, before we go to Pepper's turn, roll one more constitution saving throw, just a flat constitution saving throw to see if you're still getting stanked. I mean, Derek, like, I didn't say run. Okay, you are no longer stanked, and uh, nobody can see you. You are very, very well hidden. Not even your own party members can see you. So they, they sort of think that I've just abandoned the mission. Exactly. I haven't said anything. I haven't explained my actions at all or, or, or communicated any kind of strategy to anybody mm -hmm. else. And he's clearly distraught. All right, Pepper, it's your turn. And, uh... Behold, an act of God. The broken seeker, those broken by forbidden knowledge, seek to unburden themselves. Oh, no. -y. Oh, no. -y. That doesn't sound good. We're, we're going to Chaos Town. We are going to Chaos Town. Yep, yep, we're going to Chaos Town. All right, cool. Go ahead and take your turn. I'll take care of this behind the scenes. Don't worry about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, not concerned. <laughs> Unseely fiends. Wait, why is he running? Is he... Uh are you a coward? I didn't think he was a coward. Is he a coward? I don't know. He is emotionally fragile, perhaps. I don't I want to put pressure on it. My friend asked you to pause and give us a timeout, and I'm gonna cast sleep. Uh, Aimed in the where? Of the three, with the bad guy, mm -hmm. the bigger, the bigger of the the boss boss guy, and catch those other two, hopefully. Um, okay. But obviously, it starts with the lowest hit points. Uh, All right. And so, yes. Slash R space X D8, depending on what level you're casting it at. Uh, just first level. All right. Roll 5D8. Are you a wild mage? I am a sorcerer. Are you a hey, wild, uh, wild magic sorcerer? Uh, I am a divine. Uh, shit. Uh, what am I? Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> Mm. I'm a divine magic sorcerer of the chaos variety. Okay. Yeah. Back when I went to church, I sometimes felt like a divine shit too. I understand. Um, <laughs> um, though I do, I do have some wild magic E type things, but no, I didn't. I, I almost did choose the wild magic. Okay. Be fun, uh, but. All right. All right. Well, you know, chat's been super generous. So roll 1d20 anyways, just to see if this explodes. <laughs> Well, as a sentence it does not all right it just so to see you. 32 and it starts with the lowest hit points 
All right. In response to the fairy's outburst, all three of them pass out. That's right. <laughs> Don't hit them. They'll wake up. Hmm. All right. Was there anything else that Pepper wanted to do this round? Uh, so this guy's in a bucket, right? Yeah. An ar the upper half of a poorly assembled suit of armor. That so is if I move, I'm not going to like get an attack of opportunity kind of thing. Correct. Um, I would like to, I probably like probably picking them would count as an action. So I won't, but, uh, you mentioned there are lots of mushrooms around whose magical properties I might mm -hmm. sort of understand. So I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to look for a patch of mushrooms and go towards it. Great. And as a bonus action, you could roll survival, arcana, or nature to see if you can identify a nearby mushroom. Mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're all the same. Uh, <laughs> it's not survival. Let's do nature. 18. Okay, 18. Excellent. Roll 1d10, please. Three. You found a, a very large yellowish with green spots mushroom that has potent healing properties. When Amazing. Eating, Not when what eat, I was looking for. Shoves it into my pocket. <laughs> great. Add a magic healing mushroom to your inventory. Like and are you done? I am done. Okay. That is my turn. All right. Laylum, it is your turn. But before we do that, a quick word from our sponsors. Behold, an act of Corruption spreads. Something horrible mutates the very world around you. Ooh. Is that the corruption? Yes. Yeah, it's 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 the. It's, oh no, it's baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is the corruption. There they are. It's got out of the bucket. Thank you, corruption. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry, child invades stream. All good, That's all fine. good. The most powerful act of God ever. <laughs> okay, uh, the world around you shifts and becomes weird, and I'm gonna look up exactly what that does while you take your turn, so go ahead. Before before I figure this out, do something while you still can. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I see that those ones have fallen asleep, so I don't want to disturb them, and this guy's still wriggling. Um, so what I want to do is, I would like to cast the cantrip light on mm -hmm. the armor, um, in the hope that it becomes entirely blindingly bright inside this thing, mm -hmm. um, and I just sort of like temporarily blind the little bucket goblin, okay. Um, so I can sort of just like then put it down, torso down, so he's like. <laughs> Like stuck, blinded, okay. in like that sort of space. All right, all right. Uh, I'm not sure what I have to. Oh, it's a Dex 14. Is the save? Oh, oh no. Yeah, it's just light. It's just there now. So I'll I'll figure oh, okay, out a way cool. to to resolve that. But as that happens, a strange eerie rippling green light spreads through the area as the fog that lingers over the bones scintillates and fluctuates and its influence begins to spread over the entire grove. Please roll a constitution saving throw. 18. Okay, all right. Uh, you, you can see you can see your vision starting to change and intrusive thoughts just popping into your head, unexpected sensory input, but you, you, you clear your mind. It must be the weird mushrooms. You're probably fine and nothing happens to you. You've I used your- to get away from these mushrooms. <laughs> you've used your action and an item interaction to- dunk. Yeah. I'm Grab. hoping he's just like, ah, like inside, like a little light prison. All right. Is there anything else that you want to do? Um. Is well, I guess that's my action, and I used my reaction to do the thing. Um. No, I suppose there's nothing else for now. All right, and you're happy where you are. Yeah, she, she wouldn't try and run. There's still two people to nightly defend, and I think one of them is still on the floor. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, that is it. Now it is goblin time. Three of the goblins are snoozing. The bucket goblin is flailing around. It burns! It burns no, us! No, it doesn't! We hate Being it! Being a baby! Ah. <laughs> uh, flailing around. I'm gonna just roll to see. Roll to flail. Okay, the flailing is successful. The, go the bucket goblin has not escaped, but has successfully knocked over the armor. Funk. And the helmet rolls across the ground. You now see the goblin's head just barely peeking out over the top of it, as it, but it's still so bright that it's unable to wriggle its way out. So now there's an opening in the top and the bottom, but it still has not escaped. There are two goblins and the fairy is now approaching them and the rest of them are... Cheese it, Fezziwig! And they're going to use their actions to flee. They move, they just run in this direction. And as they do, something lurking in the shadows, something that emerged behind them, something that was drawn to the scene, perhaps the source of this odd corruption filling the area, lashes out at one of them. You hear a choked, flailing cry as one of the goblins drops. The other one stops in his tracks, looks at something in this bush in horror, and then starts running this way instead, past the lot of you. Also, all the goblins have to roll saving throws because they're inside the area of mutation as well. Area of mutation? Mm-hmm. They're asleep! Does this wake them up? I really hope that's Arthak in that bush. No, it, it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't wake them up. It doesn't wake them up. Well, I mean, it might. We'll see. No, it doesn't wake that one up. It does wake that one up. And it also wakes that one up. Uh, one of them doesn't wake up ever again as the corrupting influence of this place takes over. The goblins, as you put them to sleep, they are tormented by strange and unearthly dreams seeping into their minds as they went unconscious from the power of your magic. And could I have Jake roll 1d6 and could I have Emmy roll 1d6 each, please? I didn't, I didn't do that. They're not, they shouldn't be dead. About to discover the owner of the bones. Okay. All right. This goblin, the goblin who just woke up over here, his eyes move towards each other and then boop, turn into a single huge eye looking out of his forehead. The other one, his skin turns a deep shade of blue as they awaken in terror. And that'll be it for the goblins. That was a nice uplifting little story that we had. Uh, the, the goblin boss, having seen himself turn blue, grabs this goblin who is down and unconscious and starts dragging him into the forest. Run, it, run! D doing his best to attempt to flee as an odd mutation flows throughout the entire area. All right. And now, it is the great Dabarabu's turn. <clears throat> the great Dabarabu believes our problem has solved itself. Is there a visible, like, is it like a ooze of like a, you mentioned like a fog coming yeah, out? Yeah, let, like a... let me throw one of these down here. And while I'm at it, roll a constitution saving throw for me. <laughs> 12. All right. The Great Dabarabu takes five points of psychic damage, and I would like the Great Dabarabu to roll 1d6, please. Four. Uh, the Great Dabarabu is now seeing in monovision, as the Great Dabarabu is now a cyclops. Oh, oh, the great Dabarabu has lost much depth perception and will have a new helmet made very soon <laughs> to stop this pointy area. Oh, 
<laughs> and last but not least, great Dabarabu. Behold, an act of God. The great Dabarabu wishes fervently for two eyes once again. God. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. <laughs> maniacal dm laugh oh uh, yeah so remember how this weird uh rift appeared and i was in the middle of grabbing some special effects for it mm -hmm. yeah as it emerges as this cloud of scintillating green energy begins to pulse and warp and mutate something starts to emerge from within, something that the minds of mortals were never meant to comprehend. The great Grubberabu is ungrateful for this blessing of wisdom, <laughs> for he has comprehended such horrors and... And what would you like to do on your actual turn? Oh, um, I was just doing the screaming and writhing thing, but if I see... Uh, doesn't take, that's a free action. Oh, good. Well, is there... The great Dabarabu searches for a corporal presence of this evil. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is there. It's in another rule book that I have to grab real quick. Hang on. So, the great Dabarabu needs much time to organize his three remaining brain cells into formation for the attack. Pepper's gonna take this opportunity to go 10 1. Arthix in the trees, smearing the fecal matter under his eyes, getting ready <laughs> for the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I it's said like I didn't embrace the life. <laughs> I know I said that I didn't have any plans, uh, but I lied. I did have plans. Of course. You did. Oh, cool. This, cool, this cool, is the cool, point cool. at which I'm throwing them out. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, uh, it, 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 look, it looks Thank like you. it looks Thank like you, this. Ooh. Oh. Oh yeah. I'm back in Elden Ring. What's that at the top? Is it, is it like a trunk or like a stinger? I think it's like a barbed uh, no, tentacle. Oh, uh, okay, okay. How how big is it? It is large. And I don't have a I don't have a, a piece for this thing, so I'm just gonna see if I can Yeah, here, this pixel thing will do. Bleh! Yeah, it's no! it is. <laughs> exactly how I imagined it. <laughs> Pretty good actually. Alright. So great Dabarabu, uh you're still stuck. You're still restrained by goo. What would you like to do? Uh, the great Dabarabu wonders if it is a bonus action or the entirety of his turn to free himself from the sticky goo. I'll let you do it as a bonus action. Go ahead and roll a strength saving throw. <laughs> the great Dabarabu is still stuck in the goo. A friend could help you on their turn. Other than that, you if you have any ranged weapons, you are welcome to deploy those. I do not. But I have command? Ooh, okay. What would you like to do? I would like to speak a one-word command to a creature I can see within range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. Uh... I will shout to this writhing creature... Neil! Uh, does this ability in at all require the target to be charmable, theoretically? Just, you know, out of curiosity. The Great Dabarabu does not believe so. Sweet. Oh, hang on. Um... Because their minds are pure disorder, they cannot be charmed, and any attempts to magically compel their behavior fails. So when you say kneel, it responds... What language is that? Um... What language is that? Deep speech. Cool, don't know it. Okay, great. It probably translates to... No. <laughs> Anything else, Great Dabarabu? <laughs> He's just doing a lot of like thrashing, trying to get out of the stickiness. Mm -hmm. um, is Great Dabarabu physically interposed between the rest of the party and the creature? Yes. Okay, that is his only other goal. 
All right. Well, you're accomplishing that goal. So, Arthek, before you take... Actually, yes, it is now Arthek's turn. Before you take your turn... <laughs> we're pushing 2000 We're Why? somewhere around the $2,000 mark. Why? Please be a good act of God. Please. <laughs> Also, thank you, everyone, for your generosity. Yeah, yeah thank you so awesome. much. It's amazing. <laughs> but our bones are weak and brittle. <laughs> and will be added to the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Dark crossing. Dark briars and fairy laughter. Grim flowers in strange meadows. As the forces of chaos and a few hapless goblins that were just trying to, like, ambush some travelers and take their stuff start getting caught up in these cosmic forces, the unseely court of the Fae gazes upon this, and they what? lay their trap. They make their move. And we will discover what that move is when we return from a short break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Mm -hmm.